Hello everyone, I'm Rajesh Isan Gupta and we are discussing the impact of daily life in nationalism. So we have already discussed the, uh, the importance of Tagore's uh, alternative mode of art education and then uh, Nandalal Bose's contribution to it. So then from there we have started talking about the Haripura posters and uh, the Haripura posters, this 84 posters which were uh, made for, for this Haripura Congress in Gujarat in, in the year of 1938. And um, so in this one, as I have already discussed that how the Gandhian thoughts have reflected and also Nandalal Bose's approach to life and bringing art and craft together that had also made an impact in them. We also see that I mean the material that is used for making these images was also strategic. So we find that natural pigment was used for making each and every of these images. So we see that this, this opaque natural pigment which is which is also used with uh, you know lime or some uh, for giving the opacity of these colors or also like I mean the depth of the colors. So those those things are uh, you know used here as well and then uh, this this particular use of natural pigment is also something that we can consider as a very significant one because as we know that in the 19th century with the advent of the uh, British uh, made watercolor that, that was readily available in the market, how that transformed the visual culture in the Indian subcontinent. So, and then that was also something that was used in the colonial art institutions. So, as a, as a departure from it, we find that in Shantiniketan, I mean, of course, that I mean, watercolor was used, but this opaque watercolor and the natural pigment based paints were also something those were prioritized, unlike the colonial schools. So, this is this is uh, also important in terms of like I mean considering how Nandalal Bose had seen and worked under the patri I mean uh, worked under the supervision of uh, Abhinindranath Tagore who had started his career with le with with oil paint or pastel colors and then moved on to work with uh, the natural I mean uh, the, the gouache and tempera color as well as the wash colors and all of them uh, was was in, in contrast with the British watercolor techniques. So here again as we have uh, you know come to come to the Haripura posters we can see that how this opaque watercolor uh, has its impact on on uh, you know on the overall images and if the same image would have been done in uh, the British watercolor that would have been a very different one from the one that we see here. So this image we see this is an image in the left side of the image uh, on uh, left side of the screen we have an image of um, a hunter, a, a hunter woman and she is seen in, a, in the gesture of hunting. So that is the reason we see her in the profile view and when we discuss the uh, use of profile in the, in the miniature paintings and in the manuscripts. So we have already discussed that when there is profile, so there is usually there is a gesture that there is other part of this narrative. So of course that I mean th there is definitely this, this images are uh, just by themselves, there is no other narrative involved in it, but this profile sort of suggests that they are in action, they are doing something, they are uh, you know they are not just standing there to show that what all they possess and what their profession is, but they, they are in action, it is, it is part of their life. So to and the other um, you know I would say that I mean the other motivation for making these figures in action was also perhaps to indicate that these professions, this all these different kind of occupations are not something of the uh, you know of the practices of the past 
but it is very much practice of of the present times and present by present time i mean like in the 1930s when nandalal bose was making these images so this is also a, a gesture to show that i mean this is uh, unlike the way the the uh, you know the european documentation of the people caste groups and occupational groups have played out to show them almost as museumified objects so this is a gesture a very different one where we see that i mean there are those occupational groups but they are not really um, shown as objects but they they are shown in 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 motion as if like i mean they are in the gesture of uh, doing their daily need and then the the artist has captured uh, you know a scene from their daily life so and that is the reason i also wanted to uh, show this image side by side with this other image that we have we have studied uh, earlier and that is by balthasar solvens and from this album the hindus and this is an image of this kumar and and here as we can see that i mean how this figure stands in the foreground and the external physical feature as well as the attire he wears all those things are important and then there is another person in the background who works in the workshop and then like the bamboo structure and everything else is shown here to give a sense of how the workshop looks like how is the working condition and then most importantly who is this kumar so these are some of the uh, uh, attributes that we find here that how the external qualities were important in this documentation this ethnographic documentations uh, uh, you know taken up by the by the um, european travelers as well as the administrators whereas when nandalal bose is you know was involved in uh, representing the occupational groups how his approach was drastically different so his approach was there to show this people in motion to show them that how uh, to show the viewers that i mean how all these different kind of occupations are very much part of our day to day life and all this all these activities are something that that uh, brings life to the entire nation to this land and that is the reason they are not really freeze uh, they are not really frozen in time but they are very much in motion so these are some of the issues one can think about that how um, you know uh, the the ideology and also like i mean uh, their their approach towards the people their understanding of the life around us the daily life and their commitment to the uh, people and the and and the land all these things make a difference in terms of what we draw what we represent and 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 how we represent so with that we also see that uh, nandalal bose's contribution to, to the nation building had not stopped only with the haripura posters but after india's independence when the when the uh, constitution of india was uh, penned then we see that nandalal bose was involved in making all the illustrations cover design for the indian constitution so here in the left side of the uh, slide we have the back cover of the constitution and in this constitution what we find that uh, he uh, used this one particular motif so this particular motif is a circle and circle is something that is understood as one of the stable most stable uh, shapes in the entire universe at the same time circle is also something that stands for democracy so that is the reason we find that how nandalal bose had um, you know communicated this idea of democracy which is the pillar of indian constitution and in through this motif and if we see the details within the motif we see that there are lotuses and and foliage within the circle and something that uh, gives a specificity to this um, uh, you know the, to the to the history of india like uh, this lotuses and this uh, foliage that we see that how nandalal bose had studied them 
from the Ajanta and Bagh murals in the early 1900s, they made a comeback in this motifs. I mean, of course, I mean, he had uh, utilized those kind of motifs all across his career in various occasions, in various places, but they definitely make a, a very conscious return in when he was designing this uh, constitution. Now, from there, we also see that each and every uh, this this um, uh, the chapters of the con constitution would have um, images, and and um, he had also made a very careful selection of what kind of images should be there as part of uh, you know there there uh, in um, in in every chapter. So, for example, in this part. 5 we find the union and in this chapter 1 that we see the executive, the president and the vice president and in this one there was a need for communicating the teachings of Buddha and that is the reason we find that there is a, you know uh, the an image of Buddha's first sermon that takes place here in this deer park of Sarnath. There are the deers in the background and of course, we see that I mean how the, the landscape is characterized by this large trees and then the image of Buddha we find and then he is in the gesture of Dharma Chakra Pravartana or preaching the sermon. And then we see that there are those five disciples who are considered those first five disciples who came to Buddha to learn his, his way of life. So, they are the ones who are represented here. So, if this is one image we find that where Buddha is represented, there are many other images where uh, images for example, like Nataraja and then uh, images from Mughal miniatures like the royal court and then some of the very important uh, figures from the Indian history for example, Rani Lakshmi Bai of Jhansi, then Tipu Sultan of Mysore and, and other, other people who, who contributed largely to the freedom fighting and um, you know uh, to the nation building, they are all represented in various different chapters. So, with that what we find that Nandalal Bose's commitment and how to um, connect the historical ways of representation to something that is here in the contemporary times. Perhaps it is something we see that I mean that that he learned from Abhinindranath Tagore, but then he had also excelled that and he had taken this to a different uh, direction by uh, you know by, by prioritizing separate separate uh, episodes from the Indian history and mythology. To, to contribute to the um, you know the, the visual representation of the Indian constitution. With that we also find that Nandalal Bose had not only been a, a, a prolific artist, but he, he had also been a very successful teacher who had taught a number of students who came to be a, a very important artist in, in the Indian subcontinent and some of the artists would be uh, Binod Bihari Mukherjee and Ram Kinkar Bej. So, there is this mural uh, we have on screen that is by Binod Bihari Mukherjee and here I mean of course, I mean I apologize for the quality of the image, but uh, for the light condition and everything it is not very easy to get a better image in this place. So, here there is this image, it is a mural that shows the campus life in Shantiniketan and what we see that I mean how this idea of the daily practice and something that was already in discussion and that was perhaps prompted by Ramjanath Tagore and then the various gestures put forward by Nandalal Bose for example, doing daily sketches and you know bringing your sketchbook or postcards to various different sites and sketching them. So, those ideas have definitely uh, put a stress or at least like I mean definitely um, compelled people to look more closely into the daily life, the mundane daily life. It is not something that is something extraordinary that happens, but it is just the daily life and how, how art also grows alongside. So, 
in this image what we see that this is this is this mural by uh, Binod Bihari Mukherjee and this is uh, in one of the hostels in Shantiniketan and where we see that there is uh, um, the, there is a, a depiction of of the campus life and in this uh, image as well we see that there is a strong connection to ajanta that how um, the the mural in ajanta we see that there there is this mural on the wall and then how there are those architectural columns like this ones they sort of make a division between different narrative scenes and how there are those recesses there are also like architectural boundaries to show where one space stops and the other one starts so all these different kind of things we find and then Vinod Bihari Mukherjee's mural also marks a conscious uh, departure from the use of anatomy and uh, as well as the scale so whereas in the european uh, mode of education in the colonial mode of education we find that um, the the scale of the humans and their relationship to architecture for example the image that we saw the uh, you know from from jj school of art about the uh, the uh, the fountain at the crawford market the way like i mean the uh, the scale bit, uh, of uh, and the proportion is shown in terms of like i mean what is architecture what is human body is something that is deliberately denied by vinod bihari mukherjee here and uh, for that reason we find that there are those group of people who would be shown in much larger scale than perhaps the the, the architecture and then like i mean this scale that we see here is not also constant that there are figures who are perhaps less important they are shown in a lesser scale in a smaller scale so those are the different kind of strategies which were there you know in the indian miniatures in the indian murals and so those things were consciously brought back by vinod bihari mukherjee we find but at the same time there were also gestures in terms of understanding that the power of brush strokes the power of leaving unfinished surface those things which were uh, not there in the pre colonial indian paintings and uh, those those things which were learned from the uh, from the european uh, painters in the late 19th and early 20th century uh, perhaps from the post impressionist painters and also the avant garde artists of paris in uh, early 1900s so those things vinod bihari mukherjee was someone who definitely had uh, knowledge of both these worlds so something that 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 comes from the history of the indian subcontinent but at the same time some of the recent art activities around the globe so those two things or like i mean those multiple things were brought together in vinod bihari's practice that we see and perhaps through that we can also see the reflection of what tagore was um, you know what, what tagore envisioned that the students in shantiniketan should have exposure to not only the um, you know like the localized knowledge systems but also the knowledge of the entire world so vinod bihari being trained in shantiniketan perhaps reflect this uh, philosophy this th thought process successfully the other person we will find that i mean he also made a mark in the art making in 20th century india would be uh, ram kinkar bej and ram kinkar bej is a person whom we find that he came from this humble tribal background and then when he was in shantiniketan he was trained uh, you know the under supervision of nandalal bose and other people and this particular dedication to understand the mundane daily life also the life around us that had prompted beige to inter make some of his path breaking works and this is one of his path breaking work which is called the mill call and in this one what we see that there are uh, you know that the, there is a group of people there there are two women who are rushing and then there is this young child who's there who's also sort of like i mean catching up with these two women 
So this is basically it's a, a depiction of the the tribal people around Shantiniketan. So instead of like I mean having a romantic depiction of tribes and if we also compare that to something that was happening in the colonial documentation. So in the colonial documentation we find that the sometimes the tribes were considered uh, as the ones who are stuck in time who have not really progressed with time so they have their ways of being which are not really considered to be civilized enough which are not really suited for the society in 19th and 20th century so that is how they were depicted in the images as well as in the documentation however when we contrast that to ramkinkar beige uh, um, art then, then we see that I mean he had not really considered the tribal people to be uh, somewhere back in time, but they, they are also very much part of how the society the, how the society moves. So here we see that I mean mill call is basically it is a call or, or it is a uh, you know the, the, this, this sound that, that comes from the mills like I mean the mills where this local tribal people work. So once the mill sort of calls in the morning and then all these people they leave their work at home and they start rushing towards the mill so that I mean their work in the mill will begin. So this is uh, the work in the mill will begin. So this is something that we find that he is not really considering that uh, Ramkinkar Bej does not really consider that this, this mill industrialization is something that is away from the lives of the tribals. So he shows the uh, you know he, he make this images from his uh, understanding, he make this images from his understanding of the life around him. So that is the reason why we find that his depiction of the tribals his depiction of the people around him is very different from the way uh, perhaps the, the colonial documentation would show and even sometimes we find how the urban educated artist would show the tribals in, in a much more in a romantic uh, gesture that they, they, they are the ones who follow this pre um, industrial mode of life. So how that becomes different in, in Ramkinkar Bage's practice. Now his choice of material as we always talk about material and this, this uh, choices that also something that is very important. So he instead of using any conventional sculptural ma material he used here cement casting. So he made the initial armature of the figures and then he threw the cement on the top of it and then he left the surface almost unfinished in a gesture that as if they are still running, they are still growing. So in this way what we see that this, this particular material that is cement, it was used for construction sites, it was used for different construction projects for industry and, and for, for making residential houses in the, uh, early 90, in the early 20th century, but it was certainly not used in the art institution, it was certainly not something that was considered to be a material for art making. So there Ramkinkar Beige made his intervention that we find that something that was used as part of the daily life, as part of our life which is not necessarily connected to the institutional art, he managed to bring that together into his art making. So that is the reason we also see that this, this idea of bringing art and daily life, artisanal practices, craft, all these things together, the way it started with Ramdhanath Tagore's uh, intervention or at the same time Nandalal Bose's teachings that was continued with, uh, uh, you know, with, with Ramkinkar Bej. So to sum up all these issues what we find there as this idea of the daily life and nationalism, if we start with where we uh, sort of looked into that the idea of daily life the, and, and some of the idea of the daily practices that th those were uh, promoted by Mahatma Gandhi, for example making uh, hand spun, hand woven cotton fabric. Uh, this Khadi movement at, at the same time the salt satyagraha in, in 1930. 
so those things that the, those were the political moves uh, that that also contributed largely to the artisanal sectors and khadi is something that was not just relevant in in the anti colonial struggle in early 20th century but even after the independence of india we find that khadi had um, um, you know remained equally important and even today when we 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 stand here in the 21st century uh, khadi the the philosophy of khadi the idea of self sustainment and empowering the artisanal sectors across the country is something that we see is still relevant so that is the reason and uh, this practices they require our attention and we cannot really consider them to be separate from our um, study of the of the historical indian art objects or art practices now if we see that how that also contributed to making art so called like the paintings and so on so that we can find in the haripura posters so haripura posters by nandalal bose as we can see here uh, in in this ones we see that uh, nandalal bose had gone back to this gandhian philosophy at the same time his commitment to the local communities and how that that all those things have uh, come together in in uh, depicting various occupational groups and and um, you know various kind of works in the in the rural india so uh, if this philosophy this gandhian philosophy or like the commitment to the uh, daily life and daily practices which was also advocated by rabindranath tagore from the inception of vishwabharati uh, from the time of the inception of vishwabharati so those things would not have made this kind of images without those things this kind of images would not have been possible like the ones that we see for haripura congress so uh, and as we have already discussed that how the images of the occupational groups in haripura posters they mark a drastic difference from the colonial documentation perhaps this idea the commitment to the daily practice and knowing their power to the nation build for for nation building had prompted nandalal bose to to make this uh, images and then of course that i mean when we see images uh, such as the sant uh, i mean the mill call by ram kinkar bej there we find that this this uh, the material which were considered as unconventional material such as cement which was not really considered to be part of the fine arts uh, education how bringing that material to the fold of fine art institution and institutional practice that had opened up new possibilities for the artist of the next generation to work further to question this binary between what is art what is craft what is used in our daily life what is used only for the institutional practice and how to work through those binary or how to bring them closer to each other so all these different kind of practices in the in the early 20th century they made a mark not only in the visual culture in 20th century but some of the things that we still carry today thank you